Hello everyone, today I'm excited to present a video about Truffard packages. If you haven't had the chance to read the article related to these biomedry packages, I encourage you to click on the link in the description. Additionally, we'll find a link to the GitHub repository that will be helpful for us later. The video was made in January 2024. It is divided into seven different points each of which corresponds to a chapter on your timeline. So let's get started. So first of all, a quick talk about the objectives of Truffard package. Um, this is an open science biomedry um, development that was done in 2022 in the objective to streamline the analysis of C2C12 morphometry measurements through the Truffard cells um, plugin as well to provide um, dedicated pipeline for histological analysis from muscle cross-section with the Truffard histo package. So both Truffard packages have been designed to um, simplify, accelerate and make muscle research analysis more robust and accessible. In line with the iterative nature of scientific methodologies, we are committed to enhance the existing versions and we welcome your feedback. Whether it's to improve the code or for any other purposes, we encourage you to reach out to us. And now we can begin with a clean install on Fiji environment. So to install Truffard, uh, here we'll do for both cells and histology, you will see that you require a few dependencies that are quite the same. Uh, you firstly need to uh, start with um, Fiji. So either you have it or what we will do and introduce right now is to get Fiji uh, from the beginning on the native installation. So you can get Fiji from the link uh, in the description below. It is important to note that all original development and testing uh, for both Truffard packages was conducted on the Windows OS. So we recommend using Windows to run um, Truffard packages. However, we are working on future updates to address compatibility issues with macOS or Linux. So now that you have uh, your zipped version of Fiji, uh, you will need to unzip it uh, using a software such as WinRAR or 7-Zip, for example. And once extracted, you will find the native Fiji folder. You should open it and run the image.exe program. So upon starting the program, you will need to update this native version with the dependencies required for the Truffard packages. To do this, uh, you click on Help, Updates, and then you will need to let the program run. You will need to um, update um, the Manage sites. So you select the following domains, uh, CSBDIP, Deep Imagery, then uh, I, a IJPB uh, plugin, which is here, and results to Excel as well, and finally, you need also TensorFlow. You click on Add to Update Sites, and then you close, and you apply the changes. You wait for Fiji to download all the necessary packages and then you restart Fiji. After completing these steps, you can proceed to uh, the GitHub repository with the link in the description. Um, you can go lower on the page after the description that we have of our package. We have a link which is just right there. And you can just click on the link that is an APR text and you can download the package. 
So you also need to unzip this. Um, and once this is completed, you will be ready to run Truffad Histo, but not Truffad Cells. Um, there are different steps uh, that you need to take, which involves the installation of the deep learning model that we train specifically for C2C2 C2 detection in DeepMLG. And to do this, you navigate to uh, plugin, DeepMLG, install models, and you choose a private model. Then you go on from zip file. And after that, you need to add the model path uh, for Trifad MyChip detection. So to accomplish this, you simply press the shift key and right click on the model. That is the zip file inside the Trifad main um, directory. And then you can see that there is an option to uh, copy the path. So be sure to remove the quotes before proceeding with the installation. We can go to the edit um, button and then option TensorFlow. From there, you will need to select the CPU option and this is crucial to have at least TensorFlow 1.15 uh, installed. So you just click on it. Um, depending on your machine here, you might encounter some problems. And um, if this is the case, you can visit uh, the Fiji interface related to TensorFlow. The link is in the description also below. Once you have completed these steps, you can restart Fiji. And to verify that the installation was successful, you navigate the dev folder in the main uh, directory, and you drag and drop the installation test image to Fiji. Then you go to plugin uh, menu, and you select deep image and choose run. You wait for a date, it might be long, um, because there are a lot of dependencies that uh, deep image need to install the first time. Then you choose the uh, MyChip detection when you can do that. And without changing other things, you just press OK. And it will run the model on the test image. What you obtain is a probability map of MyChips with black zone corresponding to putative MyChips found by the model. We can now choose the, uh, a lookup table to highlight this. Uh, I have both image in RGB. Um, and what we will be able to do is to place it into a stack and observe that the model correctly detects the middle of putative my tubes. So um, this is what we will obtain. And just before we move on, um, I wanted to show you, um, this is a GIF that shows that what is happening on various heterogeneous sets of image and um, you can see that the model can adapt pretty well. What is important uh, is the resolution of the image, because if you take um, with a different resolution of what is prescribed in uh, our article or with different magnification, um, you might have totally different results that would be wrong. So you need first to test with the type of images that you have. Uh, we'll come back to that later. But you can see that it's pretty robust and that it does the job for most of the images that you can get once you image them properly. So for those that cannot make it work, uh, it could be due to TensorFlow incompatibility, incompatible updates of dependencies um, or is other issues. In such cases, you can still use the Fiji clean version that is compatible with Windows x64 uh, and that is included in our Trifad main folder also. So now we'll see how to run 
to fat cells. Um, now that you have installed uh, correctly the uh, program, what you want to do is to drag and drop the true fat cells um, file into Fiji, the one that is from the main, and you click on run. Um, once the requirements windows appears, you can select your preferred settings for your image, pre-processing, pre segmentation, mitotic retention. Um, what I advise you to do is to test and stop after segmentation for your first batch of images, just to see how the model works on your set. Um, the article provides a detailed description of each step and parameter, but in summary, what is happening is that your um, eight bits image will be cropped to a square uh, shape, then scaled back to 512 uh, per 512 pixel window, which will be pushed into the model. And then the model will predict the presence of myotubes, which then will be scaled back and subjected to a watershed segmentation technique along the borders of the predicted myotubes. Meanwhile, noise will be applied on the rest of the image. And this is important to note that depending on the characteristic of your original images, the obtained prediction may vary. Now, let's run a quick test. Okay, great. So um, now we can observe the relevance morphological watershed segmentation based on the mitotic prediction. This confirms that we can proceed to run the macro uh, in its entirety. So what you will do is that you will return to the same window. Um, so you rerun the macro once again. And um, what you will do is that you will select the appropriate image scale, um, retain the main parameters for mitotic retention, and um, after you're sure that each of the parameters are well suited, that everything is good, you just click OK to proceed. You select the directory that contains your first batch of image. Um, for testing purposes, I suggested to run this macro on five heterogeneous images. And then uh, you start the macro. And after it finishes executing, you should find uh, an Excel sheet on your desktop containing the Trifat cells matrix. Please note that Trifat cells is designed for square imaged uh, only. So therefore, as mentioned earlier, all input images will be automatically uh, cropped to square shape before being processed, while the remaining part of the images will be disregarded. So we recommend using grayscale 8 bits uh, image capture with positive phase contrasts and a 10x magnification with a resolution of approximately 2000 per 2000 pixel. Uh, we'll discuss how to interpret the exported results in the following section, but for now, let's move on to the Trifad Histo workflow. So the first step is to create a folder on your computer for each fluorescence channel, depending on the type of analysis you will be conducting. For example, if you're analyzing laminin type 1 and type 2 fluorescence for the automatic fiber type attribution post-segmentation, you will need three separate folders. Each folder should contain the corresponding 8-bit single channel image with the same uh, file name per original field. So uh, here we have, for example, RAT1. And uh, we have in each uh, f um, the fluorescence folder uh, the corresponding file name that is the same. So only the 8 bits image files that will be analyzed should be placed in this folder. This is important because uh, you might have some issues if this is not the case. Additionally, uh, an empty folder will be created for the results files, which is there. So to begin, uh, you drag and drop the Trifadis2 plugin. Um, and what you do 
is that you click run and there are four options that will be available after uh, the first window and depending on your objective of the analysis you might want uh, one or the other for example um, you have the import and work on a level image we will not describe here but it allows you to work on a previously processed label map there is segmentation of laminin image uh, which is used to segment fibers using laminin or another fluorescence channel from an image that you would drag and drop. And there is type attribution laminin type 1 plus type 2A that includes segmentation and labeling of type 1 and type 2A fiber. As explained in the manuscripts and estimates um, the type 2B or type 2X fiber and it does the thing uh, automatically. And finally, there is the type um, attribution laminin um, plus type 1 plus type 2A plus type 2X that uh, includes segmentation and fiber typing uh, using free labeling in the same pipeline. Uh, this pipeline does not allow an automatic attribution of the fiber uh, type, so you will have to sort and arrange the data from Excel. However, this is the most comprehensive one, and you will be able to use this for uh, fiber type through uh, classification and analysis of hybrid fibers, for example. The following description is on the fully automatic fiber type uh, pipeline described in the original article, but uh, you can run the fourth pipeline uh, on the same basis. So you will be prompt to select the path for the folders corresponding to each labeling laminin type 1 type 2a in the specific order um, and from there you will need also to add your result folder and then um, it is possible to adjust the probability tre threshold to uh, assign fiber to type 1 or type 2a uh, however we recommend keeping the default parameter unless adjustments are necessary based on the quality of the image acquisition. It may help to manually check a few images from a batch using a different threshold before running TrueFAD again. On the second phase, uh, you can see that um, you have various parameters that can be adjusted in order to modify the resulting segmentation, fiber retention, uh, and result export. So you can boost, for example, the type 1, the type 2, uh, you can artificially enhance the signal contrasts of the respective fluorescence channel um, and additionally the fine edge um, filter can be systematically utilized uh, for um, uh, heterogeneity of the fibers of the border signal and it closed the laminate gaps. Um, you can use the uh, morphological directional median filters uh, with more or less power. This is uh, the second option. And then there is the tolerance. Uh, so the tolerance parameter is used for watershed extended minima based segmentation as described in morphological uh, segmentation. Um, and the criteria of min max label area and label uh, maximum elongation and label origin define the level retention required to obtain definitive muscle fibers. When you activate manually edit level post filtering tick box, uh, the users can switch from fully automatic analysis to a semi-automatic analysis with a user-friendly interface that is designed to uh, assist in the removal of undesired labels. So the option to save automatically label map array is available. The set scale um, uh, parameter needs to be adjusted according to the image resolution and to facilitate label filtering. The subjective parameter of rate of performance uh, of your machine uh, introduce artificial delays uh, in inverse proportion for the grading of the machine's uh, performance. This allows sufficient time for Java and certain plugins to load correctly in Fiji. The enable batch mode option can be ticked to run the plugin silently 
or unticked to display each step on the image processing. I recommend to you to stay unticked as batch modes may introduce several compatibilities issues and a temporization issue. Okay, so now you can click OK. And at the uh, conclusion of the analysis, several windows will open. So please click OK for each of the window. The resulting output uh, would be a TIFF level map uh, that you can reuse, a composite JPEG image uh, with all the fibers identified and their numbers, and the ROI zip folder with all the ROI related to each fiber that was detected. It can be found in the result path previously selected by the user. A detailed quantified output is available as an Excel file which should be renamed upon completion of the writing uh, from the read and write Excel plugin. It's on the desktop. So you need to rewrite it because if not, uh, if you restart uh, the macro, the plugin will write again on the same um, Excel uh, sheets that you um, have on your desktop. So you don't want that. It is recommended to thoroughly examine all images for consistency in segmentation and fiber type identification. Uh, if any ins inconsistencies are observed, it is advised to rerun the TrueFAD analysis with different settings. So when you take the images, what is recommended is that you take grayscale um, 8-bit images uh, with a magnification of 10x and a resolution of approximately 2000 per 2000 pixel. And in the following sections, we will explore how to handle the exported results. And for now, let's uh, proceed to the troubleshooting phase. So normally there should be no issues with the installation on both packages, but if you find some, reach us and we try to help you. Once again, be aware that these packages were developed and tested on Windows, so we cannot certify that it will work on another OS properly. So here I summarized a few known issues that you might encounter during the macro execution. First, you might see a text box that will tell you that there is no result window or no whatever window open. So this is a temporization issue. If Fiji uh, is able to navigate with different packages in different programmation language, uh, there will be still some temporization issues depending on the machine performance, on the time that it takes to load the plugin. And sometimes Fiji does not wait for a task to end to start a new one. Uh, this is not frequent, but it can happen. We got these issues at different steps here. But depending on your machine, what I advise you to do is to set up the machine performance at the beginning at low and retry. If there is still an issue, look at the detailed macro issue report and find the line of the code where there is an issue. Then hard code in your macro, a wait command before the line where occurred the problem, such as wait brackets x x x end of the brackets with X that represents milliseconds. You can say, for example, 2000 milliseconds. The second issue that you may see um, is results are not exported in Excel. So um, you open the file and there is nothing or it did not update or there is uh, missing information. So there might be several options. First, um, the read and write Excel plugin cannot operate when the Excel file is open. So you need to close it. So it means that um, you will need to close it for the plugin to write the data when it exports on each image. There is also the possibility that the plugin wrote your data 
in a wrong Excel file. And you can see in detail how the plugin works by looking at it uh, on the documentation online. Um, but the best is to keep the recommendation of um, renaming the file every time you're running uh, a batch of analysis. So the other issue that you might encounter are naming files. So this issue is particular to Trifad Isto. But what you have to care about is that uh, for each of your images, you have to name them separately. Um, the same as we show on how to run Trifad Isto. So yeah, if there is a space, uh, an underscore, a different uh, resolution between the uh, different flows and channel, for whatever reason, um, the program will not run properly. There is finally another issue that we want to talk about. It's um, the, correct, the correct format of your images. So if you do not have a correct 8-bit format on your images, it will still load it, but it might not treat it well. So we encourage you to take well-contrasted images with your microscope at the right recommended resolution, the good dynamic range for both pipeline with black and white camera using the full complete dynamic range of your sensor without saturation. For us, we used a Zeiss Axio there uh, to take um, the images at 2000 pixel width resolution with positive phase contrast for true fault cells. Tries to use the same equipment, or at least you have quite the same resulting images as the ones that we published. Because the um, uh, farther you are from that, the hardest it will be for you to uh, navigate through the uh, adaptation of the parameters to get something relevant. Of note, this is possible to change the scale of your images uh, with EG to crop to have artificially create a kind of positive phase contrast also. L the first example that I want to show you is regarding uh, a normal um, cross-section area that you can get with all good images um, with perfect fluorescence. So you see, you see that this is really perfect. You have uh, fibers that are well delimited, uh, everything is well leveled, but this is not always the case. Um, so, yeah, sometimes you have images that are really uh, not easy to get from precious sample. And what you want to do is to optimize it. And this is what we can get um, with this cross section of uh, human muscle sample. So you see that uh, Trifad made a good job. Uh, it delimited well the um, uh, fibers, but there is still some off targets. Um, and what I will show you here is uh, how you can try to change your raw images that you have from your microscope to make it usable by our plugin in safe condition. So, for example, here what you see is that you have um, all different resolution that you can get from the Zeiss image, the raw CZI image. Uh, and let's take, for example, the second one here. Um, so, as you see, uh, this is a really big image, uh, not a big, big one, but um, there is 8,000 resolution per something and there is different channel and you might not necessarily want all of them. What you want is to separate them. And uh, what I did is that I, I did a little macro that looks like that. So uh, first you convert everything to eight bits and then um, you scale down this to 0 0.15 uh, because this is what works for me. It can be scaled down to whatever works for you according to resolution that we recommend. Um, and I also delayed the, uh, this type 2B signal and the DAPI signal. 
So this is what we have here. We have uh, the three different channels that are of interest. And um, we have them separated. And now we can just save them uh, for uh, the different folders path. And after this, we'll be able to run Shufan Listo. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to show um, is related to Trifat cells. So here we are uh, um, working with images from InQ sites. You see that they are really, really different from what we published. Um, the resolution is completely different, uh, 1400 per uh, 1000 pixel in comparison to what we have here. This is completely different. So. What is possible if you know a little bit uh, the image treatments that you can do on this type of images is to increase the contrasts uh, artificially. And for this, I made a little macro. I'm going to explain to you what is happening there. Uh, so it takes a folder, a complete folder, and it enhances the contrasts with this. And it runs different filters to look like bits of what we had uh, in our um, training data sets. So it opening all the images from the same um, point of view. So here it was uh, a time, different time points from the same um, uh, space of the well. We made uh, six well plates with C2C12. And there is 121 fields that were imaged on face contrast every two hours. And um, the image that you get from Incusites is not super well contrasted. So here, it looks like this is something that we can use. I'll show you. Um, you can see on the timeline uh, the evolution of the, of the self. If we take um, the first and the last image, what we can do is um, duplicate each frame. So here we have the first time points. And now we go to the last one. We duplicate it. And I have a little macro that is based on uh, our model of my chip detection that is able to uh, convert whatever image uh, that you have into the prediction model for the MyTubes detection. So here you have it for uh, the last image at 22 hours of treatment with something that kills the cells more or less. And you have it at 10 hours. So if you take it side by side, what you can observe is that on the same place, there is a lot less MyTubes that are detected. So this can be quantified. You can quantify the uh, total area um, occupied by the by the mighty um, prediction so you you see that you can play around uh, different ways to make your images look like the one that we made uh, in our pipelines because we are conscious that between the different acquisition system between the different protocols that you're doing um, to to get your um, samples prepared and stained or uh, the different uh, way your different shading your my tubes for two fat cells uh, you have a lot of heterogeneous image that you can get so as much as we try to get specific things treated for this troubleshooting section um, such as um, what we saw with the um, error uh, that you can encounter. 
there are things uh, that we are not able to address. Um, there are some specific limitations related to the automatic fiber attribution. Uh, for example, uh, hybrid fibers uh, are not able to be assessed uh, and addressed um, in 100% of the cases in the uh, third um, pipeline for Trifadisto. But what we wanted to do with this uh, plugin is to give the opportunity for whatever people to uh, modify the different parameters and to play around. This is what matters the most. And the thing is that this is possible for you to adapt them. Uh, you can even retrain the deep learning model um, from the thing that we get in our GitHub uh, that we give you. So for hybrid fibers, for example, you will need to use the fourth pipeline. Um, and for human chips, for example, uh, you will need to adapt a few things. But in the end, um, the, this pipeline uh, will be generalized and uh, should be re robust enough to work on most of the things that you have. It is important to note that these tools are not flawless. Rather, they have been designed to be adaptable and user-friendly. It will be necessary to make multiple atoms with different configuration in order to adapt the pipeline to suit your specific set of images. If you discover methods to improve performance, facilitate data processing, or overcome any obstacle, we encourage you to contact us, um, to reach us, and we try to um, update to make notes of that. So, now that you have exported your data um, in two ways, uh, as a result image for both pipelines that show the segmentation, um, and you have also um, the data that are exported as an Excel file. What we will work on right now will be this Excel file. So we can open it. Um, what you can see are blocks of uh, images, but without uh, moving forward, first you need to rename, if it was not already the case, um, the file. So there is no issue. So this is the block that I'm talking about. It's a repetitive um, subset of columns and each of the block is corresponding to one image. So you have each of the lines that are uh, for here fibers, but in the Trifat cells, uh, it will be uh, a muscle cell that will be detected. You have the different parameters. So you have area, perimeter, uh, threads, um, all of that. And it appends along all the fibers detected for this image. Um, so you have all of these um, different parameters and you have also the fluorescence intensity and the fiber type that has been attributed because we are on the third pipeline export. And uh, this is the label value that corresponds to uh, the different type according to uh, the uh, previous column. So we have here, for example, one fiber with the different parameters and here another. And uh, you can see that um, according to what we wrote and shown in the publication, uh, the subtraction between the different fluorescence intensitional according for each fiber is able to uh, give a putative um, type, fiber type. So what I would do is that I will make a copy of this row, um, um, subsets of data. And here we will call this clean or cleans or, or clean. And what we would do is that we would try to clean this data. So I'm not gonna extend a lot of things, but I just want to show you a few things that you can do on your um, data analysis. Um, so the first thing is that, for example, you can uh, sort by uh, the area of the fibers. And here, what you can do is, of course, remove the biggest one, but here we don't want to think too much. Uh, what we'll do is that we'll remove the, um, 
a little issues that we got. So all the fibers that are under uh, 1000 micrometer square. Here it is. Um, and then what you can also do is come back to the top and sort by roundness. You can also sort by uh, circularity, but um, if you know a little bit, roundness is um, more interesting parameter to sort. And here, what I'd like to do is to choose a cutoff of um, fibers that are um, over 250 of roundness, 0 0.250, are kept while the others are removed. And here, you still have around 900 something fibers for this image. So it was a, a big image um, that was acquired on the slice scanner from uh, Zeiss. So now um, the idea uh, is to analyze this data. And what we can do first is to freeze uh, the first um, line in order to uh, see the things more properly. This is what I'm doing. And now um, what we can do is sort back for this first image, um, the uh, labels for all the images, uh, for all the fibers, according to the label. And here, uh, what is possible for you is to pick up one label and to remove it and to clean it. So I'm not going to do that. Um, we will just pretend that everything is clean in this complete thing. And uh, we're just going to make a copy of this and we're going to call it uh, analysis because uh, we assume that we completely cleaned uh, the file according to uh, as much as we can. And here I'm just going to show you um, what you can do. Um, so really easily you can do uh, the median of, for example, the area. So here we are on fibers from human uh, muscle. Um, and uh, here I select completely uh, this column with control and uh, bottom arrow. I append that to uh, all of these things up to the roundness. And uh, you have the median for all of that. And what you can do now uh, is, for example, make decisions uh, formula, for example, uh, to count uh, the number of fibers that are present on this sample. So what you take is, uh, for example, from C, uh, from six to up to um, the 10,000 line. So you're sure that um, you will be able to completely address that when you will append this block of analysis. If you don't understand, that's fine. You will understand later. So you see here there is 941 um, fibers that have been detected um, and that are correct. And now what we will do is that on this subset, um, we will assess, for example, the percentage of uh, type 1 fibers. So here we make a conditionate uh, analysis. Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm French, so um, I need to, to change that. So we we'll count only if the, um, in, in the range, if the cells are here, type 1. And as you can see, um, you can even um, do directly the, the percentage. Uh, you don't need to, to, to do this uh, um, count. By dividing 
of the total number of cells, and then you format it to percentage. So here we have around 50% of the fibers that are type 1. And then uh, what we can do is do the same for the other types. And um, the good thing with that is that um, once you made the formula, you just have to append this. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is that depending on your statistical analysis, uh, you might want to look at the distribution of the fibers or uh, the distribution of the MyTube's diameter. Um, what is recommended is that at least for each, each section that you have for uh, histological fibers, you have 100 fibers analyzed. Um, I would not believe a section that have less that's than 100 fibers. Um, and for true fat cells, uh, we started to see statistif statistical significance of atrophy with 15 images of um, 50 mitubes per image for control versus dexa at um, dexamethasone at uh, 48 hours, just to give you uh, a quick run. So something that is really uh, provoking a lot of atrophy. Um, you need 15 images to uh, be able uh, in the same condition as us, uh, to be able to, to, to see this level of uh, difference um, between the two conditions. Um, so w what could be good um, for you, uh, for example, for true fat cells, would be uh, to take 50 images in control versus DEXA in your lab um, and to calibrate your setting for uh, true fat cells because you know that you will have um, a result and that you can believe in the trends that you can see. So we make a 24 hours or 48 hours treatments. Um, you can see this is detailed in our publication. And um, yeah, th that's the best. Just just calibrate your tool so you don't have to worry too much about the results that are coming from it. So there are a lot of things uh, that we can do to improve our knowledge on muscle biology from these tools. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below or reach out to the authors by mail or via GitHub. If you want to participate and help enhance these packages, let us know. Uh, thank you for your attention during this video and good luck for your analysis. Bye.